Uh, thank you so much for availing yourself this afternoon. Uh, if we could please start with the veracity of this report and what we know. Yeah, I must be honest, I haven't really seen the report itself. So I've, I've seen media reports of the report. But uh, it's really well, what it is, in fact, is a report from the manufacturer of Pfizer where they have to apply for registration to the registra registering authority, in this case, the Food and Drug Administration of the United States, the FDA. And there they list all the uh, reported adverse events. In other words, anything that has been reported from people that have had the vaccine. So obviously that list becomes very, very long. In this case, it's 1,291 different adverse events. Now, in that are uh, you know, things which happen to people once they've had the vaccine. Uh, we, m the great majority are probably just totally incidental. And this happens with any kind of medicine or vaccine which is registered with any registering authority. The manufacturer needs to supply uh, a list of everything which has been reported. Most of those are, in fact, not related, not due to the medicine or to the vaccine. I think this is the same situation with Pfizer. Uh, in fact, the CDC has come out and they've looked at, they've analyzed all these adverse events and they said that 92% um, are in fact mild or trivial uh, or have no relation to the vaccine. And less than 1% are severe enough to need medical care. And obviously even with that, most of are, are, are relatively mild. So I think we'll see that with all medicines. You know, those package inserts, inserts those folded up, thin paper which goes, uh, which goes into the package of any medicine. It lists a long, long list of, um, of potential, uh, of reported uh, side effects and adverse events. I really think people don't need to be concerned about it at all. The vast majority of the severe side effects are extremely rare, very, very rare. Mm. And I'd like for us to expand on that, right, because this has had a lot of tongues wagging. Uh, for somebody that yeah. is watching this and has read just headlines of uh, what this report is about, mm. uh, can you reiterate for us, should you be concerned or, or not really? Not, not really to be concerned at all because, you know, if you look at the you know, vaccines are very, very innocuous. They're not 100%. You know, if, if, it, if it's going to, if something's going to be completely safe, if it's as safe as a cheese sandwich, then it's going to be as effective as a cheese sandwich. So clearly there has to be some kind of side effects. Those are, the vast majority uh, are mild, and th those are not too uncommon. Uh, many people get a tender arm after the injection or feel out of sorts the next day. That's really a response to those chemical mediators which are part of the immune response. Uh, and that can be easily treated or just ignored, in fact. The more severe side effects are very rare, of the order of about a handful. If you look at, for example, the inflammation of the heart, which is one of the ones associated with Pfizer, it's, it's uh, estimated to be about 20 per million doses. So it's vanishingly small. On the other hand, you just have to look at what is being prevented, because these side effects, are, which are attributed to the vaccine, are probably about 10 to 50 to 100 times more common and more severe with COVID infection itself. So, you know, on the balance of it, it is a, a very safe, not 100%, but very, very safe vaccine as against a illness which uh, is relatively serious in many situations. Mm. Uh, Prof, in terms of the side effects from the report that I could get my hands on um, online, it speaks of renal failure, embolism, uh, and strokes amongst many others, yeah. as you've mentioned. But also of particular interest is, is that um, this is research or data that was collected uh, from European countries and not necessarily on the continent. Given that there's a gap, right, with a lot that we still need to know in terms of why it is that the continent is experiencing such low low death rates and, and low infection rates, should we, or what should we understand about this in relation to us as a continent, I guess? Yeah, we are fortunate in the continent and in South Africa specifically that we do have a high level of immunity. Now, that immunity is due partially to the vaccine, but also due what we call natural immunity. In other words, people that have been infected, they develop an immune response which protects them as well. And I think what, what has happened in South Africa and the rest of the continent as well is that there's been a silent transmission. People have been infected, particularly the younger individuals, without being aware of it, and at the same time develop an immunity. 
and if we and we know about this because if we look at blood samples so in a random samples what you call sera prevalence studies we take blood samples and we look for antibodies and we can find antibodies from 70 to 75 even 80 percent of those samples that means that people have seen the virus they've been infected we do have a young population and we know that the younger the population the less serious the, the infection is and i think this is what has happened with omicron specifically of course we have a very contagious a very highly transmissible virus which fortunately uh, causes a relatively milder illness compared to the previous variants. So that has also boosted up the prevalence of immunity uh, in the population. Mm. I, I, to my knowledge, at least, I have not come across a statement from Pfizer on this. Perhaps I could have missed it. Uh, but there's so many allegations around it, right? So it's also alleged that uh, this report was not supposed to be made public. It was supposed to be suppressed. Uh, and that request is for the next 70 years uh, or something like that. But also, interestingly, in this report, there's a part on pregnancy and lactation, and you have yeah. missing information there. What does that mean? Well, you see, I, I think you know, the, these, the, these reports are relatively confidential. They're actually the, conf the manufacturer applying to the regulatory authority, the FDA. And uh, it's not really a public document. It's a document through which the FDA assesses whether that vaccine should be licensed in terms of whether it's safe and whether it's as efficacious, uh, efficacious it's effective. Uh, so it, this obviously was leaked. And the problem with leaking it is that the context uh, often gets misunderstood. Mm. Um, these are, as I mentioned before, everything which has been reported historically doesn't necessarily mean that the vaccine is going to cause these things. Each of these report events has to be investigated to see, is it just temporary? Is it just at the same time? Or is it the result of, is it caused by the vaccine? And the majority of these are not caused, they just happen to be at the same time. With regard to pregnancy, this has been very thoroughly looked at by, amongst others, our advisory committee. Um, and uh, there's been a numerous publications and also numerous statements from bodies such as the American Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology, the British equivalent, many European countries as well, that vaccination in pregnancy is, is very, very safe and also for lactating mothers, very, very safe. Whereas COVID, the infection, can have serious problems uh, in, in a minority of cases, but certainly can have the potential of having serious problems in pregnancy and for the newborn child as well. So certainly we do strongly encourage, in the majority of cases, uh, pregnant women to get vaccinated. They should consult with the attending doctor, of course, but uh, this is our general recommendation. Uh, as we understand it, maybe if we bring it closer to home, some 100,000 vaccines are set to expire at the end of March, I think. Is this a cause for concern for you? Well, I think what's a cause of concern is that the vaccine is not being taken up. Uh, you know, why did we have 100,000? I think, you know, we are lagging behind in our vaccine coverage. Uh, and we do need to kind of encourage more and more people to get the vaccine in their arms because it is a, it's a safe vaccine, as I mentioned before, and effective vaccine, very effective, particularly in preventing severe disease and, and death. Uh, and even with Omicron, there are hospitals, we've got over 2,000 people in hospital with Omicron. So uh, for many people, and the great majority of these, over 75% unvaccinated, so vaccine, vaccination can be very effective, particularly in protecting against severe disease. Maybe not so effective in protecting against infection, but certainly against severe disease. Uh, Barry Shub, chairperson of the Ministerial Advisory Committee on COVID-19 vaccines. Thank you for your time this morning.